Well, Tommy, this was a bold move. I mean, you you don't talk your film down, but you didn't build it up. I mean, this is this is a film that's got Scorsese in it. It's got Rick Linklater. It's got you. It's got uh, Stephen Prince in it. And the amazing stories. I mean, this really was the road manager for a bunch of big rock bands and people. And, you know, and it's just incredible stories. What people don't know is that... <laughs> Uh, a lot of the stuff in the American Boy he did in the 70s with Scorsese, which is just a documentary with him talking uh, that's cut into your film, is what ended up in the first cult classic, Pulp Fiction. Tell those stories. Well, um, you know, the, the, the scene where they put the adrenaline needle in the girl who ODs, you know, probably one of the most memorable scenes of the movie, is almost taken verbatim from um, the documentary. And one that, of the most memorable yeah. scenes in cinema. Yeah, and uh, you know that happened to Stephen Prince. He's the guy who put the adrenaline shot, um, you know, into the girl's heart and and saved her life basically. Um, and and of course, we used a scene um, almost verbatim in Waking Life. Um, you know, so it's it, he. You know, he's had a he's he's and he has a really memorable scene in Taxi Driver. You know, he's he just had a really profound effect, I think, amongst uh, the sort of independent filmmakers. And um, and I sort of really wanted to make this movie and kind of really expose that and show people, you know, how much influence this guy really has had. Plus, he's just a, he's a really sweet guy and he's a really good friend. Well, you know why he's so so in, I mean, why he ended up being successful in film and working with Scorsese and others is he's, he is a really interesting person. I mean, you you meet these people who are so original, uh, flat out dynamic. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Prince certainly is that. You want to just briefly tell the story uh, for people that haven't seen Waking Life uh, with you know him shooting the guy in the chest? Yeah, well, um, he, he, yeah, it's actually a, a true story about somebody who was trying to rob him when he was working at a gas station. This is and, when he's gone off heroin. He's no longer yeah. doing the road managing, and so he, he tries to you know get out of there, go to upstate New York. He's at a big gas station. Yeah, and um, and and it turns out that it was an escaped convict. You know that was going to. Um, Robin, I'm wrong. He, yeah. he moved out to the desert by yeah, California. Desert. Go ahead. And, um, and, you know, he had to shoot the man. And, uh, and he got back up and he shoot, shot him several more times. And then he tells the story how, like, the cops basically were, you know, had to question him because they were just like, you killed him on the first shot. Why did you shoot him? You know, he emptied his chambers in him, you know. And, uh, and so he, he but he has, it's really the way that he relates the story. It's the way that he tells the story that's, that's really amazing. His eyes are electric. Yeah, yeah. Big eyes, but I think like a American Boy, you know, hadn't hadn't been seen, and you had to get these bootlegs. I mean, when I first got it, it was a, a VHS tape, of several generations, really scratching. That's the way like most people seen it. Now it's up on YouTube. You know, you can just go type in American Boy, Stephen Prince, and you can start watching that. So, in fact, pull up American Prince, uh, Stephen P Prince, uh, or pull up American Boy, Stephen Prince, and just roll some of it in the in the uh, background without audio while we're here on PrisonPlanet TV. Yeah, yeah, do that. Um, <clears throat> shifting gears, Rick Linkletter, you know, we went out to the Driscoll after your premiere uh, Saturday, yeah. hung, hung out for a few hours, and, and Rick's never been like this to me. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we talk about politics, we talk about technology, we talk about all sorts of stuff when we hang out. You know, uh, but he came over to him with a hand, he said, listen, I want you to come see this. This is my best film. Mm -hmm. This is my best work. And he was, like, really excited. And I thought, wow, Rick's never acted like this before. So I went and saw it. Today and it blew me away. It's not because I know Rick or whatever. I mean, I was really watching it objectively. I think this is overall his best work. Yeah, and um, you know, I, I I can't wait to see how the rest of the public's going to react to it. Um, you know, we just saw it, so I'm still processing it and everything. But it's really great to see that, and I'm I'm a huge fan of Rick. Rick's, um, you know, I mean, Rick has just been a constant influence in my life. Not only as a friend, but um, I think that he's probably one of the most interesting, you know, film directors alive, and you know working today and so it's always an event for me to go see his movies well it was just great to be included in it and, and a secret sneak i mean there was literally this was not advertised only <clears throat> i guess that's because it's so long until it comes out four yeah, or five so months october did yeah. it say when it's going to come out and it stars zach afron which is i thought was an unusual choice the guy from uh, high school musical three which i actually saw on the airplane coming down here well, the guy that plays uh, Orson Welles looks just like the young Orson Welles. And he Welles. acts like him, too, right? I mean, he sort of has that, that, that gravity and that magnetism. But, but he's not the only amazing actor or actress. I mean, all of them do a fabulous job like they're not acting. Because, you know, yeah. I mean, even great films, there's one or two people who really don't carry it off. Rarely, do, at least in my opinion, do I see a film where they all 
you are transported, you know, to 1937. Right. Yeah. No, it was a, it was a, it was a fantastic experience. And it's also somewhat tragic, but then it's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's again, it's always. I think the interesting thing about Rick's films is they kind of go along these strange lines, you know, these margins, and it's always those, the people are always traveling along those margins. We'll be right back with Tommy Pallotta, award-winning filmmaker, producer, director. Well, I got about 25, 26 minutes left with Tommy Pallotta here in studio with us in Austin, Texas, during South by Southwest. Tommy, what is coming next for you? I know you are, I mean, folks, Tommy has just made a lot of successful movies, directed them, produced them, uh, been in them. He also, uh, first thing you did was like a, quite a few very successful MTV uh, videos back in the day. You've done major uh, commercials. You've consulted for one of the largest corporations in the world, but you don't like to get into that. You have, uh, you're, uh, right now, you're designing museums uh, around the world. Uh, you're working with your uh, bride to be. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Femke. That's and you're living in the Netherlands, yep. which, which my mother's been all over Europe and all over the world. She says that's her favorite place to be. Yeah, well, you should come for our wedding. Well, I'm about two inches away from moving there. <laughs> Can I set all this up there, move my whole crew to the Netherlands? Sure. Yeah, that's a good place. Um, well, you know, I mean, I, <clears throat> as far as it being a safer place, I don't know about that. But um, I do know that probably the best place to be as things get worse are around people that you care about and love. And um, so that's where I am right now. Um, and I do want to say that one of the greatest pleasures I have living there is that I, I listen uh, to your show daily um, through my iPhone, and it's it's amazing. And I know the last time we were here, we talked about doing an iPhone app specifically for the uh, Info Wars, the Info Warrior app. And I was wondering whatever happened with that, or has anything happened? When you mentioned that, we probably had no exaggeration more than fifty people. Then I fifty groups. Then I, I don't know how to wade through it. Uh, or, or, but the problem is nobody just said, here's an app, you can have it, because the issue is we have about 130,000 people a day downloading the free podcast. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I have a responsibility that if I was to take somebody's app, but they still control it, they can just flip the switch one day and put something else on it. Right. And I've had that with things I've built up. As soon as people figure out that they can't, not that I'm some big shop, but that they can't get through to me at my office, they will go attempt to take it over. Right. With, with whoever I'm in business with. That's why there's very few people I can trust. I can trust you, Tommy, because I've known you for more than a decade and a few other people, but I've been, and I've said I've still got to be bold and, and, and outgoing and work with other people, but as you get bit, mm -hmm. it, it makes you trust fewer and fewer people, and then it makes you value your friends mm -hmm. who haven't ever screwed you. Like I've only received being your friend. You know, I know you've right. you know, had, had good experiences with me as well, but I mean, how do you deal with that with Hollywood where it's even worse? I mean, how do you deal with all the subterfuge? Um, you know, I think you follow your instincts and you kind of, you follow your heart. But I mean, I, to the listeners out there, I'm sure there's somebody out there who, who really wants to help you out and then whose intentions are really good and who would sort of give over ownership and control to you. I think it's a really important tool to have. I know, we need an app, so you just click it and it launches it. Right so, now we're on Flycast and all that. Yeah, and I and I, that's what I use. I use Flycast, but I mean, it would be great to sort of get a feed of the news stories as you put them up and get more links and more additional information. I wish that there was like a very specific, you know, InfoWars um, application. So Well, there you go. I'll uh, I'll just have to launch it, I guess, or go with somebody. But uh, folks, so senior I, I know that there's somebody out there listening who can do this and who can make it happen. And uh, if there's anybody who's listening who who's wanted this application themselves and has the ability, if I could program, I would do it for you. I promise I would be the one doing it. Well, with us, it's all been an issue of funds. I've now got two main you know, full-time uh, IT guys. We've got a consulting company, and we are looking at the apps. I've just been kind of the last three months only doing Obama deception. Yeah. And so I haven't been able to make decisions on that. But I'm glad you keep bringing that up because it is important. So let's, I mean, how is Obama deception doing? I mean, what's what's been the reaction so far? I mean, I, I, watched, right. it, I watched it on YouTube myself, so. Well, give me know. your real review of it. You know, it's my own little film book style. but I think it's great. You know, I mean, the, the really amazing thing that um, I've noticed because I've, I watch all your films um, is that it almost seems like it's a, it's a constant um, thread that runs through your movies. And each time you're kind of re refining your your ideas and your thoughts. So and the films really are nice chapters, yeah, like in a book. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it's really always great to, to be on that journey with you. I feel like as you're, you're investigating and you're learning, that we're along that ride with you. And I think that that's a really amazing thing. Well, I appreciate that, Tommy. I hate here talking about myself. But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you've been watching that pro that progression, and I hope it's getting better. You know, we can make even better films uh, if I wasn't focused on 
on uh, uh, you know other energies and other places and other issues we're having to deal with. But I would call you a real progressive, you know, a classical liberal, not the mainline fake corporate liberal. Uh, you very early on. Before Obama was even elected, you weren't obviously for McCain, but I remember you saying, I got a bad feeling the way the media is covering him, what they're doing with him. I think he's going to betray people. And uh, that had some input on me deciding to make the Obama deception. I mean, why did you, and now it's being proven, you know, correct me, he's in the news today saying, yeah, no rights for detainees. It's, it's all continuing. More, more troops, uh, you know, hiring nothing but lobbyists. Uh, I mean, why early on did you not trust Obama? Well, um, a lot of its instincts, but I think, I'll, uh, you know, I mean, uh, let's not, of, of course, I was a Ron Paul supporter, you know, from the very get go. And, um, you know, I have a, an amazing amount of respect for him as, as a person and as a politician, which I think is very rare. 